morning. I want to thank you for watching us online today here at First Baptist Church in Mount Vernon. I am in a series that I'm calling Conquering Your Circumstances. We began last Sunday morning and this is the second message in that series. It's all from the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. So I invite you to take a copy of God's Word and find Romans chapter 8. And this morning, find specifically Romans chapter 8, verse 12. Romans chapter 8, verse 12. This will be the second message in the series, Conquering Your Circumstances. I want to lead us in a word of prayer before we begin this morning. 
It's Memorial Day weekend. I certainly want to remember those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. And so, if you have found Romans chapter 8 and verse 12, let me lead us in a word of prayer. Would you pray for yourself today and ask the Lord to speak to you through His Word, through words that I will say today? And then just in a moment of quietness, would you remember those who have given the ultimate sacrifice so that we can live in a free nation? So let's pray. Father, thank you today for this weekend, for the opportunity to remember those who have died serving our country. Father, they paid the ultimate price so that we could live in freedom. Many listening to me, watching me today, had relatives, Father, who paid that price. We're grateful today for their sacrifice. Father, we come now to your word. We come, Father, seeking understanding. We come seeking the ability to apply it to our life. And, Father, I pray that you'll speak through me and to us all today. You'll meet the needs of those who watch and listen today. Father, we all need to live above our circumstances and not under them. We all need to be able to conquer the circumstances that we're in through the power of the Holy Spirit. So allow us some insight today on how exactly to do that. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you ever make all A's? Maybe it was just for a six weeks. Maybe it was for a semester. Maybe it was for a whole year. All A's. Wow. I can remember a time when I was in elementary school that I almost made all A's. The first six weeks of school was over and it was report card time. And I got mine and I looked at my grades. I had five A's and one B. An A in every subject but one So the next six weeks I went to work. The next six weeks I was determined to make all A's. The second six weeks was over. Again, I got my report card. Five A's and a B plus. Now, I'd gotten better, but but I still did not have all A's. And I'm sorry to report that that one subject kept me just from making all A's all year long. It kept tripping me up. Every six weeks, I made all A's except for this one subject. I went the whole year, never made all A's because one subject kept tripping me up. Do you know what that subject was? Conduct. (laughs) Can you believe that? Conduct. The teacher wrote notes in the comment section of my report card pepper talks too much she wrote no matter who i sit him next to he talks to them one six weeks she wrote i cannot get him to quit talking (laughs) so no all a's for me not at all The 8th chapter of Romans is about conquering your circumstances through the power of the Holy Spirit. One of the actions that the Holy Spirit takes in your life that allows you to conquer your circumstances is to give you all A's. Now, here's what I mean by that. Here's what I mean. The Holy Spirit delivers to you four privileges. The Holy Spirit delivers to you four gifts, and they all begin with the letter A. Hey, you made all A's. Listen to our text this morning. Romans chapter 8 and verse 12. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you must die But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. 
Now, those verses connect us to last week's truth. If you remember, the first step in conquering your circumstances was that you need to step out of condemnation and get in step with the Holy Spirit. Step out of condemnation, get in step with the Holy Spirit. And these verses, 12, 13, and 14, remind us of that. I like to call them connectors. I like to call them connecting verses. And we will find them throughout this chapter. They lead us to the next principle, the next step in conquering your circumstances. So, just for a short review, to conquer your circumstances, you step out of condemnation and you get in step with the Holy Spirit. We are not to live obeying the flesh, our sinful nature. We are to be led by the Spirit. We are to be led by the Holy Spirit. We are to get in step with the Holy Spirit. That's what verses 12, 13, and 14 tell us. All who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And when we do, when we are led by the Spirit of God, look what's next. Here comes your all-A report card. Verse 15, Romans chapter 8. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption. There it is. There's your first A, adoption. You have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. There's your second A. It talks about access to the Father. We cry, Abba, Father. Your second A is access. Verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. There's your third A, assurance of salvation. And then verse 17, and if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ... If indeed we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him, we have acquired an inheritance. We have an, accusation, an acquisition. There's your fourth A. So you made all A's. Adoption, access, assurance, acquisition. So here's my life point this morning. Here's what I want you to understand. You conquer your circumstances... By not listening to what your fear declares, but by acting on what your faith delivers. You conquer your circumstances by not listening to what your fear declares. Do you see that there in these verses? Look at verse 15. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again. A spirit of slavery... Leading to fear again. What is this fear? Well, it is a fear that you are no longer in God's family. That you've done something that kicked you out. Or it is a fear that God doesn't love you anymore. Or it is a fear that he cannot use you after what you have done. It is a fear that you're not good enough to be a Christian. It is a fear that you will never be good enough. And what it creates in our lives is a, a spirit of bondage. It creates in our life an anxious state of mind. We live our days with a nervous restlessness in our hearts. We, we worry. There is a worrisome, fearful spirit within you. The Holy Spirit is not the author of any of those feelings. And yet, so many of us live with them. You may be one who lives with those anxious moments, that bondage, that worrisome, fearful spirit. The Holy Spirit does not bring any of that into your life. In fact, let me remind you of what 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, 
but of power and love and a sound mind. Let me remind you of what 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17 says. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It's a word that means freedom. It's a word that means release. So let me say it again. You conquer your circumstances by not listening to what your fear declares, but by acting on what your faith delivers. And what your faith delivers to you is all A's. Adoption, access, assurance, and an acquisition. So... Uh, Let me spend the rest of my time this morning explaining a little of what each A means. And while I do this explaining, I am reminded of a statement by revivalist, speaker, author, even prophet, Leonard Ravenhill. Leonard Ravenhill writes in his book, Why Revival Terries, One of these days, some simple soul will pick up the book of God Read it and believe it. Then the rest of us will be embarrassed. We have adopted the convenient theory that the Bible is a book to be explained. Whereas first and foremost, it is a book to be believed. So first and foremost this morning... Before my explanation, before I try to explain a little bit what each of those words means, would you simply believe what the Word of God says about you this morning? Here's your first A, adoption. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15, For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption. Adoption. Paul is the only writer in the New Testament that uses that term. He uses it five times, three times right here in the book of Romans. In fact, he borrowed it from the Roman law courts of the day. Adoption was a common practice in the Roman world. The Romans were concerned about heirs. They wanted to have the proper ones. They wanted to make sure they had heirs. Strangely, Jews did not practice adoption. Adoption, though, is a terrific illustration of one aspect of our salvation. Now think about this. Adoption means you are admitted into a family in which you were not naturally born. You now enjoy all the rights and privileges of being a son or a daughter in a family in which you were not naturally born. But yet now you have been adopted and all of the rights and privileges and joys of being a part of that family are yours fully and completely. In fact, the word adoption is actually made up of two words. It is made up of the word son and the word to place. Son and to place. To place a son or to place a daughter. It is the Holy Spirit who places you into God's family. Now, some of you watching me this morning may be adopted. You have a benefit that those of us who are not adopted don't have. You have the benefit and the joy of knowing That you were chosen. My parents had to take just what they got. But no, if you're adopted, you have the joy of knowing, hey, I was selected. I was chosen. That is what has happened to us as children of God. That is what the Heavenly Father did for all of us. He chose you. He selected you. And the Holy Spirit placed you into God's family. And if that has happened to you, you no longer have to live your days with a fearful outlook. You no longer have to live your days with an anxious state of mind 
worrying about whether or not you are good enough for God, worrying about whether the Father accepts you or not. No, no, no. You have been adopted into His family. The Father chose you. You conquer your circumstances by not listening to what your fear declares, but by acting on what your faith delivers. And your faith has delivered to you an adoption. Believe it. That's what I want you. That's what I want you to do today. Believe it. The Spirit makes you a son or a daughter in the family of God. He doesn't make you a slave. Now here's your second A. Access. Verse 15 goes on to say that we have not received the spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry, Abba, Father. We cry out, Abba, Father. The first word is Aramaic, Abba. The second word is a translation, Father. But it is not the formal word at all. Father. Dear Father. No. It is a word of closeness. It's a word of intimacy. Jesus uses this very term in his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before he was crucified. Mark chapter 14 and verse 36. Abba, Father. All things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Do you hear Jesus praying to his heavenly Father? He begins, Abba, Father. This exact expression. And so, Abba is a term of closeness and intimacy. In fact, it is still used in Jewish homes today... When children address their father, it is closely aligned to our English word, dada. A little baby will look up at his dad and say, dada. It's closely aligned to our word, daddy. Our word, papa. It's a word of intimacy. Closeness. For when you call someone daddy, when you call someone papa, you have a relationship with them. Close, close. When you call someone Papa, when you call someone Daddy, you can come to them at any time and you know their love for you and you know their care for you and you know that you will get your needs met. Some of you ladies know exactly what I'm talking about because you are a Daddy's girl. And when you need something, you go to Daddy. Intimacy and closeness. And do you knock when you go into that house? No. You just walk right in. You know, none of my children knock on my front door. None of my children, when they come to visit, they just walk right in. They, 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 they have free access. You know why they don't knock? Because the person behind that door is their daddy. And it's the same way with your heavenly father. It's the same way. You walk, now picture this, you walk right into the throne room of the universe and say, hello, Daddy, let's talk. (laughs) You have the privilege of calling the creator of all things Papa, Daddy. You're that close to him. You have that kind of access to him. Friend, that is not blasphemy. That is intimacy. And that is what the Spirit has done for us in Christ Jesus. He has given us the ability to cry, Abba, Father. Some of you. Some of you live with a different image of God. You live with a God who you fear You fear his judgment. You think God is waiting for you to do something wrong so he can punish you. You you don't believe that you can go to him any time. You don't believe that you can just go and talk to him and tell him your needs. Don't. You've been delivered. 
from the fear of bondage to slavery again. You have been granted access. Says. You have been granted access. You can say, Papa. You can say, Daddy. You can say, Father. So call on him. Go to him. You don't even have to knock. You conquer your circumstances by not listening to what your fear declares, but by acting on what your faith delivers to you. And what your faith delivers is access, intimacy with your heavenly Father. Now here's your third A. We've talked about adoption and we've talked about access. Your third A is assurance. Verse 16, Romans chapter 8, verse 16, the Spirit Himself testifies, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. Let me ask you a question. Do you have assurance that you're saved? Do you know for sure that you're saved? Do you know for sure that that you are a child of God? You can know that. And this verse is one of those verses that teach us, yes, we can have assurance. Yes, indeed, we can have assurance that we belong to God, that we are saved. Look what it says. The Holy Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God testifying is a certainty of the Spirit's presence and work in your life. Your assurance comes when you know the Holy Spirit's testifying in your life, bearing witness in your life. Your assurance comes when you know the Holy Spirit, see the Holy Spirit at work in your life. The Spirit testifies when He shows up in your life. And when he shows up in your life, God is saying, he's one of mine. She is my child. And you have that assurance. So let me just uh, ask you some questions. When the Holy Spirit manifests himself in your life, he is bearing witness that you belong to the Heavenly Father, that you are his child. So let me ask you, just answer silently in your own heart these questions. Is there a desire in your life to pray and read God's Word? Is there a desire in your life to pray and read God's Word? Or do you go days, sometimes weeks, maybe even a month, without spending any time reading your Bible? Or maybe without praying more than just a quick prayer? Maybe just over lunch one day you pray? Is there a desire in your life to pray and read God's Word? Is there a conviction of sin in your life? Do you feel reproof in your spirit when you break God's law? Does something tell you, something inside of you say to you, that's wrong? Is, is there conviction of sin in your life or or, or do you pretty much do whatever you want to do without any guilt? Feel like you did nothing wrong? Is there a desire in your life to tell others about Jesus? Or, or is His name rarely on your lips? Then is there a desire to worship with others? Together in God's presence and sing and exalt the name of Jesus and hear the word of God proclaim? Is there a desire to worship together with others in God's presence and worship? Or is worship sort of a take it or leave it kind of thing? If I go, fine. If I don't go, that's okay. And then finally, is this fruit of the Spirit? The characteristics of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, are they present, evident in your life? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. 
Your yes answers to those questions tell you the Holy Spirit is at work in your life. The Holy Spirit is testifying with your spirit. And God is saying, He's one of mine. She belongs to me. The Holy Spirit drives you to pray and read God's Word. The Holy Spirit convicts you of your sin. The Holy Spirit compels you to tell others about Jesus. The Holy Spirit creates a desire to worship God. The Holy Spirit produces His character in your life. All of these things give you the assurance that you are saved. The assurance that you're a child of God. You conquer your circumstances not by listening to what your fear declares, but by acting on what your faith delivers, and your faith delivers to you assurance. Now, here's your final A, acquisition. Your final A is acquisition. This past Tuesday night, I had a meeting in Yantis. And driving back from Yanis, I had not had supper, dinner, had not eaten that evening. And I decided to stop at Chick-fil-A in Sulphur Springs. Can you ever just drive past a Chick-fil-A? I, I don't think so. I, 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 don't, I can't anyway. But anyway, so I decided to stop at Sulphur Springs and, and get something to eat on my way home. Now, I ordered a number three meal. Now, that is a 12-piece chicken nugget box with waffle fries because I was going to take some home for Deborah. I wasn't going to eat all 12 pieces myself. But, but anyway, I, I ordered a number three, 12-piece nugget waffle fries, and I said I want a root beer. And, and you know the drive through at Chick-fil-A and Sulphur Springs, it is so just awesomely run, so efficiently run. There's a little girl that took my order there at the window, and I told her that that's what I wanted, a number three meal with a root beer. And she said, we don't have root beer. I said, well, give me a Dr. Pepper. And she said, yes, we can do that. She said, can I have a name for this order? And I told her my name was Pepper. <laughs> and she said, all right, Pepper, that will be $8.47. And if you'll just pull up there to the window, a girl up there will take you, take care of you. So I pulled up there to the girl to, to pay. And I rolled down my window, and the girl said, the person in front of you paid for your meal. I said, oh, they did? She said, yeah, the person in front of you paid for your meal. I said, well, wh why would they do that? I don't, I don't know the person in, in front, of, front of me. And she said, well, we kind of got this thing going in the drive through now. I don't know how it started, but everybody is just kind of paying for the person behind them. So your meal has been paid for, Pepper. I said, well, good, I'll, I'll pay for the person's meal behind me then. And she looked down at her little ticket and said, okay, that'll be $33.69. Oh. <laughs> and so I didn't want to look like a cheapskate. <laughs> so, so I handed her my card, and my $8 number three meal turned into a $33.69 meal because I paid for the person behind me. Those people in the car behind me, they acquisitioned a blessing. <laughs> That's what they did. They acquisitioned a blessing. But do you know something? Your acquisition is even more terrific. You have acquired an even greater blessing. You are an heir of God. You are a fellow heir with Christ. That's what verse 17 says. We are heirs also, heirs of God, fellow heirs with Christ. Did you know that Roman law made all the children of an heir equal inheritors? Even adopted children were equal inheritors. Jewish law gives a double portion to the oldest son, not Roman law. Paul has Roman law in mind here. You are in the heavenly Father's will. Have you ever seen that bumper sticker? I'm out spending my kids' inheritance. 
not your heavenly father. No. You're in his will. And you're getting an equal share with Jesus. Wow. Fellow heirs with Christ. All that the father will give to the son, he will give to you as well. Now, I'm not sure I know all that is involved in that. But it surely is far, far, far better than a meal at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I, I think there's a hint in what it means when it uses the phrase at the very end of verse 17. In order that we may also be glorified with Him. Glorified. That speaks of a new body. That speaks of a body that will not have any sickness or disease. That speaks of a body that will never wear out. That speaks of a body that is fit for God's everlasting kingdom. And that is what Christ has been given. And that is what you and I are promised one day to acquire. Because we are an heir, fellow heir of Jesus Christ. Heir of God. Fellow heir with Jesus Christ. Now, notice the connection to the next section. Verse 17 says, And if children, we are heirs also, and heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, in order that we may also be glorified with Him. Next week, we're going to talk about conquering our circumstances through suffering. Verse 17 is that connector verse that I talked about earlier. It connects this principle of conquering your circumstances with the next principle that we will see in Romans chapter 8. And it has to do with conquering our circumstances even in the midst of suffering. But we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that next, next week. Do you know what we want to learn today? Brothers and sisters, you have been given all A's. Adoption, access, assurance of salvation, and an acquisition. Believe it. You conquer your circumstances by not listening to what your fear declares, but by acting on what your faith delivers And your faith delivers all A's. You finally made it. Let me talk. Let me talk to you who may be watching me this morning and don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, everything I said this morning applies only to believers. It applies only to those who have placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. It applies only to those who have acknowledged their sin, turned from their sin, believed that Jesus died on the cross for their sin, and committed their life to Him. Have you ever done that? Have you ever bowed your knee, bowed your heart, confessed sin that you have broken God's laws, Believe that Jesus and his death on the cross is payment for those sins. And now you're willing and wanting to commit your life to him. You can do so today. You can do so right now where you sit. With a simple prayer. Whether you bow your head or not makes no difference. Really whether you close your eyes or not makes no difference. But in your heart... You would say to God, Heavenly Father, I know I've sinned, broken your laws. and Right now I'm turning from that sin and putting my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I'm committing my life to Him. That's all it takes. Let me pray. Father God, thank you today for the opportunity to share your word. I pray for that one or two, four or five, whatever number, Father, you have watching today that do not know you as Lord and Savior. I pray that today they would realize the joy 
of what it means to be a believer and having all A's in their life. And they would come to faith in Christ today. Draw them to salvation, Father, and save them today. And then, Father, I pray for those believers, those believers, Father, who needed encouragement this morning, those believers who needed to hear all that, that, that is theirs in Christ because they've been listening to that other voice, they've been listening to that, to that spirit of fear. Father, help them see that they can conquer their circumstances by not listening to what their fear declares, but by acting on what their faith has delivered, access, what their faith has delivered, adoption, what their faith has delivered, assurance, what their faith has delivered, acquisition of an inheritance. Let them hear those voices. Let them hear that assurance. Let Let them hear that encouragement in their life today. And it's in Christ Jesus' powerful name I pray. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for watching our streaming service this morning. If you made a decision concerning your relationship with Jesus Christ, I would love to hear about that. And so would you email me? My email is pepper at fbcmv.com. You see, that's really simple. If you would just tell me, hey, Brother Pepper, I've made a decision to trust Christ. That would so thrill my heart to hear you say that. So send me an email. Again, it's just pepper at fbcmv.com. Or if there is another decision you made that you want to share with me, please do. If you have a prayer request, please share that with me as well. And I guarantee you we'll take care of that. We'll be praying for whatever request you send in. And if you don't have a church home, I would hope that you would consider First Baptist Church, Mount Vernon, your church home. And again, thank you for watching today. May God's best be on you always.